Okay, thank you. Yeah. So while they're taking my presentation here, uh, I will just uh, actually <coughs> grab the moment and give you some news about yeah. the Rangefer Journal. In Sweden, we haven't had the problem of saving the rain there, but there has been some issues about the Rangefer Journal that some of you might know. And uh, most likely, uh, our department and our small unit of reindeer research in Uppsala will host the journal uh, the coming years. It's not set yet, but we hope that everything will solve in that way. So maybe next Kirby workshop can be published in, in the Rangefer Journal. Okay, now back to the pellet groups. Uh, I'm using uh, uh, pellet group counts to illustrate the reindeer changes uh, in habitat use in a boreal for forest. And it's all about windmills and reindeer here. And uh, there's a big issue in Sweden with lots of windmill parks built in the reindeer herding area. There is about four to 5,000 windmill plants planned or projected within the reindeer herding area, spread all over in different sizes of parks, etc. And probably everything won't be a reality, but uh, there are big plans. And uh, we have done a study in uh, yeah, mid-northern uh, Sweden, uh, within Malo reindeer herding district. Uh, it's about a thousand kilometer north of Stockholm. And if we get, this is like northern half of Sweden with the reindeer herding districts. There are 51 districts. And this is a forest herding district and it's here. And about there is the study area. Um, so the reindeer are herded in a pastoral system, but they are freely ranged, so they are they walk around as they want. And this is a study, it's a summer grazing area. And there's two um, parks built in this area. One with 10 windmills and the other with eight. So these two. And we have collected data on pellet group counts before and during the construction, construction of these windmills. And we try to make a design that are both at, both at the regional scale and at the local scale. So we have collected data. Uh, here are uh, plots within 100 meter distance. And then their transects are 300 meters apart. And then we have the uh, quadrants here, which, which have two, uh, 20 plots in each, and it's 200 meters between each plot. So in all in all, it's like 1,200 plots in, in the whole region. And we did far counts, and uh, uh, that's like uh, fecal accumulation rate and fecal standing crop counts. So the first year, we counted everything, and then we threw the pellets out of the plots. And the next year, we counted one year uh, uh, pellet groups, or pellet groups <laughs> from reindeer uh, using the area during one year, but mainly during the background season, since this is a summer range area and not used in the winter. We know that we have counted the plots during the summer. And um, we started off, we have um, also, GPS data from this area. I will show you a little bit from that. So we have both pellet groups and GPS data, and I think it's important actually to have both to see what they actually have done in the area. However, and this is also to give you an overview how it, how it looks. So it's a forest which is managed there. Most of the forest is cut down and then replanted. Uh, and there's quite a lot of mires around the mountains where the windmills are built. Uh, these are the new roads. These are some new power lines. 
this is also a new road. And uh, yeah, it's the Pineland Fir Forest. And uh, just to give you illustration of the plot where we count, it's 15 square meters. And we, yeah, you just count all the, the pellet groups that you find within the plot. So, here I will give you the results of the pellet groups uh, with the clean plots. So I won't show anything on the first year's counting because it's kind of dif difficult to compare these two because they contain different amount of pellets due to the decay rate of the pellets. And this should be, yeah, this is the year I accounted the, the, the pellet, but it represents the, the use during 2009 and so forth. So we see, see from the first year uh, in over the whole region, there you go, uh, and in Storliden, there is uh, more pellets than uh, in, in the end of the uh, study. So here we have during 2010 and 11, there is uh, construction in the area. And during 2009, there is still before. So what we see is that there is, seems to be a, a decrease of the range of use of the area. And uh, we also work with the reindeer herders in the area, and they say that they have just used the areas as they usually do. They let the reindeer out during the spring after they have migrated up, down from, uh, up from the winter herding area. So they, uh, they let them go and they spread out in the area, and there is calving, and then they continue to use the area for a while, and then they spread further to the west. Uh, but so they haven't treated the reindeer in any different way. They just do as they usually do. Uh, so, to say something about the habitat use in relation to all these constructions and all the, the natural factors within the area, uh, like vegetation and elevation, fact, uh, topographic features, aspect, ruggedness, etc., we did a generalized linear model with a, using the Poisson distribution, since the pellet groups, there's usually uh, a few pellet uh, plots with uh, many pellets, and then most of the pellet uh, plots are are empty or zeros. So this is a way to handle this kind of data. And uh, I have used both distance to road, oh, uh, distance to roads, and I've also sometimes replaced it for uh, density of road. You will see. Okay, so we'll first first go through the uh, regional uh, data. And the first year, there was no construction in the area. It was as usual. Uh, here I missed to actually uh, show the power line, but here is the like a, a old power line or power line that goes through the area, and. There is, uh, you can see that there is quite an obvious avoidance of the density of the power line. Uh, there is also a relationship between clear cuts and young forests, and there seems to be that the reindeer use areas with lower forests, so this is kind of uh, what they seem to like here. And since there's a calving area, this might be that they want to have open areas when they, uh, during the calling, just to have site, site ability for predators, etc. I have not had the possibility to, to, to check on predators, but uh, there are in the area, of course. <coughs> okay, so the next year, uh, first year of construction, there is this, uh, avoidance of this new power line built in between. Uh, they, uh, 
the old ones and the uh, windmill parks. And the uh, last year, when the construction was finished, uh, they all were up and running in November in last year. So there was still construction during this year. Uh, they actually seem to prefer the area around the uh, around the power line, but still there is a decrease, a total decrease of rain there in the area. So, uh, yeah, the rain there that are left, maybe they they prefer to be around here. Okay, and now I go into actually one of the areas here at the local scale, Storliden, which is kind of important for the calling. And the reindeer also, I will show you later. Um, so here is a close up on this area. And here, I can actually show you all three years in a row. Um, it's kind of the same use, actually, we see here. They tend to be on the southwest side of the mountain all the years. And there is a migration route here through the area over to the other side of a larger road. And uh, they seem to be still using that, but there is less, less, uh, less poops, at least. Um, and they avoid the distance. They avoid the power, the large uh, power line. Uh, it's outside this area, but yeah, it's somewhere here. And there is also a, um, avoidance of the new roads into the area up to the power lines. Oh, up to the windmills. Uh, so we have. Uh, just to show you a little bit of the, the GPS data here and the brown and bridges of the of the individual GPS uh, reindeer uh, during uh, calving during the three period during 2008. So that's the year before the first uh, pellet group count shown here, and this is the same year as the first, 2009. And here is uh, the year of the uh, construction. So there seems, if you compare these two years, there seems to be a large difference between the use in this part of the region. Uh, however, during the year, also without construction, they, they tend to use this area less than here. Uh, what, what's important here is maybe to look at the migration route between the areas and how they use the different migration routes and in relation to walking in between different foraging patches, or foraging areas, rather. OK, so that was, ah, I have my conclusions here also. Uh, so there was an overall decrease of reindeer area use. The reindeer avoided old roads and power lines. And they avoided new roads and power lines, both at the local and regional scale during construction, during the first year. The second year was a little bit different, but they still use the area less. Um, and as I said, uh, it seems to be important to keep in mind the migration route and how uh, how this affects uh, the range of use of the area. If the linear construct constructions kind of cut off the migration route then between, uh, between the foraging areas. Uh, yes? was it. And I also take the opportunity to make some advertisement for a conference about windmills and <laughs> uh, uh, wildlife and environmental impacts that's in Stockholm in February. Unfortunately, the abstract deadline is due, but there might still be interesting topics. <laughs>